I wouldn't play around with this. I would just take the win. A lot of things going on with military conflicts, especially maybe even starting tomorrow. If you only ever watch one video of mine, this should be the one because there's so much on a macroeconomic level that's going to happen possibly as soon as tomorrow. That's going to throw things like oil, commodities like gold, any which way, change the trajectory of military conflicts. We have to get into that. A lot of things, you guys know I'm on the front lines of the newsletter, so we get a lot of emails. I know how some of you guys are thinking. We got to talk about how there's going to be a possible decline in some of the precious metals prices after all the strength we've seen. And also, should you put $80,000 into Hecla mining was one of the questions we got. I want to address that. Also trying to time the silver trade. And there's major things happening like drone warfare, hitting nuclear power plants. We have to talk about all of this. It's very relevant. This is the turning of the tide. This is where you need to be positioned, ready, understand all the tides that are happening right now with the economy, worldwide global conflicts, the prices of commodities. It's all coming together. Everything we've been looking for and what we've been talking about for years is all coming together right now. And for subscribers of the Peter Lee's newsletter, we've got a great new stock pick coming out for you tomorrow. Plus, we put for everybody else a portion of one of our reports below this video so you guys can check out the kinds of stuff that we're putting out, the kind of content that we're providing to you. And gold just hit a new high for the eighth session in a row. How good does that feel to be involved in some of these stocks that we talk about? It's up $26 or so today to $2,379. So you guys can see now how it's very likely if it increased that much again, it's going to be over $2,400 and then $100 from the striking point of $2,500, which once it gets through there, it's just off to the races. And I've been telling you guys about this trade for such a long time that people were getting numb to it. You've been saying that for so long. And so that's the only reason I could imagine why you wouldn't be somehow involved in this gold trade, the precious metals trade. But the other thing I've been harping on forever that I feel like no one's paying attention to how bad it's going to be is this impending debt bomb. And you guys know this to be true. You know I'm right about this. The debts are growing. We're doing nothing to curtail them. We cannot sustain this level of increase. And eventually, these debts will need to be paid. Eventually, this whole system blows up or they have to water down the currency. Either way, it's not a good outcome for the vast majority of us. If you keep an eye on it, there will be opportunities. Like I always tell you, I used to always tell you that there was more millionaires made in the Great Depression than any other time in human history until China came along. I can't say that anymore. <laughs> but the debt bomb is approaching. It's finally being recognized and it's a big, big problem. We're going to keep an eye on it for you and show you what the opportunities are as the debt bomb approaches and explodes. Now, here's the big one. Iran is pretty upset that Israel struck Lebanon and took out one of their top commanders, a few of their top commanders, and they vowed a reprisal, vengeance, as soon as Ramadan was over. When does Ramadan end? Tonight. So as soon as tomorrow, you're going to see possible repercussions from Iran of any type. They have proxies everywhere. Who knows how this is going to play out? But a lot of the ways it could play out could spike oil prices dramatically. It could shut down shipping routes. Gold's risk premium will only build more from here. Investors will be moving towards risk off. The trajectory of many global conflicts could be changed by actions taken by Iran or their proxies within the next couple of days. They're not going to wait too long. It won't be months from now. But it could be as soon as tomorrow, maybe not for a week or two. Who knows? Nobody knows. That's the point. And I always tell you that uncertainty is the worst thing for the stock market. Uncertainty is worse than bad news. You think, oh, we might lose $10 million for this company I'm invested in. And you don't know? That's worse when they go, okay, it turns out we lost whatever millions of dollars. We lost $10 million. Then you know what you're dealing with. It's like having an illness your whole life. You're not sure what it is, and you finally get the diagnosis. Even if it's a bad diagnosis, people are often relieved because now they know how to deal with it. They know what they're supposed to be doing to combat the illness. But I always tell you guys that gold is nature's insurance. So if you want to buy insurance about all of the things that are happening right now, because you're going to need some, then you should have some kind of exposure to gold or gold mining stocks. Speaking of which, I want to address an email we got about, is it 
reckless to put $80,000 into Hecla Mining. If you want to buy a gold mining stock, Hecla Mining is wonderful. They're a great company. They mine silver as well. But what I would suggest is if you're going to, if that's all your money, first of all, you scale in and scale out. You buy some, then you buy some more. A week or two later, you buy some more. If you still feel good about your decision, you can load up a bit more. But I wouldn't put all that money into one stock and say that's going to be safe. Even if it's a great company that I believe will go up in price a lot from here. And I'll tell you exactly why. You have to keep in mind the difference between a commodity and a company. Gold will always be gold. You don't have to worry about bad things happening to gold. It's just the price changes. That's all. It will always be around. So if you buy GLD, that's actually a lot safer than if you put all your money into Hecla Mining or any mining stock. Because the difference between a commodity and a company is that in a company, there could be a mine explosion. There could be a repatriation of the mine. If it's a South American country or some of these countries where they have gold mines and they repatriate it or they bezel money or they make bad decisions in terms of acquisitions or they don't have the workforce all of a sudden or anything can happen. There can be terrorism, whatever. A company is always vulnerable. There's company-specific risks. Every company has different levels of the things to worry about, how much you have to worry about it. But no matter what, any company on any day can suddenly drop in share price 50% because of something major happening. So you can't put all your money into Hecla Mining and sit back and go, well, it's a good company that I believe will go up in price and then be stress-free about it. What you want to do, and I don't like saying diversify, but because I don't really diversify, certainly not as much as I should, especially if you've seen my personal holdings the other day. It's almost all gold and oil, but it's still spread out among a lot of companies. So if one of the oil companies has an oil leak and they suddenly drop in price a lot, that's only a portion of the portfolio. You don't put all your eggs in one basket, but you definitely want to be involved in this basket. So buy some Hecla Mining, buy some silver mining companies, buy some of the other companies, the gold mining companies that we talk about in the Peter Leeds newsletter, because you know that they're a lot safer than a lot of the other companies that are out there. One of the things we look at is to make sure that they're less likely to be nationalized. They have good safety records. They have good relationships with the endemic groups that live there. That's where you get a lot of the workforce, especially way up north, like in way northern Canada or Alaska, where there's not a lot of people around. You need to rely on the endemic workforce, the aboriginals or the First Nations groups. And as long as they're on board, that mine will operate a lot better. So that's some of the things we look at. There's so many things to look at with any mining company. And there's risks. There's not risks in gold. There's no risk in gold except for the price changing. And one of the other questions we got was about silver. There's an expectation that precious metals prices are going to come down soon and you can buy in at a lower price. I agree with that because anything that goes up as strongly as gold has... In such a short window of time, there's always going to be profit takers. There's always going to be pullbacks. That will be very healthy, but you don't know if the pullback starts today or it starts a week from now or it starts three weeks from now. At some point, the pullback will help you buy an extra 5% maybe, but you're taking a risk. You might be missing out on 20, 30% gains while you're running to say 5%. Don't do it. Just get exposed, get invested in a lot of these companies that are going to be benefiting as the prices of Precious metals increase. And drone warfare is completely changing everything for the macroeconomic events because we just had a drone attack on the nuclear reactor power plant in Ukraine. So go to show you for low price, a military can exact a lot of damage. So for example, they hit the refineries recently. That spiked oil prices. They could hit the pipelines. They keep hitting the nuclear power plant. That could be a big problem. Drone warfare changes the entire approach or concept of conflict. It changes all the rules. We don't even know fully yet how this is all going to play out, but there's a lot more macroeconomic event risk because of drone warfare. And just to go on a bit about diversification, I practice what I call pinpoint investing. If you saw my portfolio, it's about nine gold mining companies. I've got three or four oil companies and then a couple other penny stocks that I believe have a chance of doing something. But when you diversify, what happens is that then you get equivalent to what most other people get. The more you diversify, the more you get average gains. I don't want average gains. 
What's the point of that? That's not even difficult to do. And I even talk about it in my book, Up Thinking, that it's not about making money. A lot of times people are more focused on or feel better when they make more money than their neighbors or their people in their peer group. They want to do better than, so they feel they've accomplished something. If you and all your buddies just made 10% on the stock market, you're all just equal, which is fine. 10% is great and being equal to your buddies is great. But I'm saying a lot of people get more of a boost or more of a kick by trying to do better than the masses. That's where all the benefits and the rewards lie, in my opinion. That's why I pinpoint to invest. But you got to really know what you're doing, keep an eye on the right kinds of companies, know how to look at them, and be aware of the possible risks and downsides that could derail your investments. By the way, you can get up thinking my book, at peterleads.com only. And I want to talk about the risks of a company, if you're talking about commodities versus companies. As an example, there's a stock that I owned for a while, Arctic Glacier, which I got killed on, wiped out. Not wiped out, but it went down a lot. I got washed out big time. The management started doing price fixing. They got caught for price fixing. How do you screw up such a good situation that you took so long to build? But they got caught price fixing, the shares tanked, the whole company got in a lot of trouble. And so that's what I'm saying about you can trust a commodity, but even a commodity that's rising in price, a company that mines for that commodity, that will benefit as the price of the commodity increases, is not safe if something happens like price fixing or a mine disaster or a nationalization of the mine. Anything can happen. That's why you own a lot of different really high quality gold mining companies, which is what I would say if I was giving you one message in my entire life ever, it has been that for such a long time now. Now we get to benefit from all the gains that are finally playing out as I expected and told you that they would, but there's risk still if you do it wrong. If you put all your money into one stock, that's not good. If you try and wait and time it to try and day trade it, to try and buy it at 5% less or 10% less than it's at right now, that could actually cost you a lot more. I wouldn't play around with this. I would just take the win. And one other thing I want to say is that these elevated precious metals prices, you're going to start to see a lot of industry consolidation. For a long time, I've been telling you guys that it's less expensive to buy a mine that maybe doesn't have enough money to develop their mine properly for a big company to buy that mine and run it properly than to explore for new finds yourself. All the good, high quality finds, shallow mines where you can do a strip mine to get the gold rather than dig too deep, all those easy finds are already taken and being exploited. Most resources have been identified and exploited. There's not a lot of great mining opportunities now. That's why there's gonna be a lot of consolidation, especially at these higher prices. So a smaller gold mining company has a lot of chance of being bought out by a larger company. The company doing the buying usually has a little bit of a hit to their share price. The company being bought almost always has a good spike in the price, 20%, 30%, 40% instantly. Now I know that you guys want to keep an eye on all of this that I'm keeping an eye on for you. A lot of things going on with military conflicts, especially maybe even starting tomorrow. And... If you want me to keep an eye on it for you, you want to know about all this stuff before it happens or while it's happening, what to do about it, please subscribe to the channel. We'll totally keep an eye on it. We'll help you out. If you want some of our free learning tools or you want to see why the Peter Lee's newsletter is one of the most popular financial newsletters of all time, swing over to peterleads.com and you can learn all about it.